G'day everyone, welcome to part two of the How To ODST SMG tutorial. My name is of course Andrew DFT, and let's get into it. So when we left part one, of course we had about three layers of foam all snacked up to give the uh, design a bit more of a 3D perspective. Of course now what we can do is take it and put in a whole bunch of more elements to really bring the design together and make it one cohesive looking piece. So enough talk, let's just continue. All right, so quick flashback, of course, our gun looks like this. We have all the layers on it, and we're ready to start building some extra things. So the way we're gonna go forward, we're gonna kick it off by starting to build up the uh, magazine, the little clip that goes on the side, and we'll actually glue it into position. So, to kickstart things, grab the template, cut it free from the larger piece of paper, and then what we'll do is we'll transfer that onto the foam, and then cut out a single slab of foam into the shape of the uh, magazine there. Now what we're going to do is break down the template even further, but we'll start from the left and work our way across. So all you're going to do is cut off that little segment on the far left, and then draw the line where it should be on the foam. Now you can add a depth line. Obviously we're going to now build this edge to give it a bit more of a 3D look. So all you need to do is grab your nice sharp blade, and please make sure you've changed it recently, and then slice off that edge so it looks relatively clean. Now what we can start to do is break the template even further. We're going to take off this uh, top section, or side section, I guess, and transfer in where the line should be. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut the internal circle-ish looking piece out and transfer that also onto the EVA foam. Now because these lines on the design are a bit too, uh, well, together, you can just free, free draw them on yourself. It doesn't need to be that many, just enough to kind of fill the space. Then of course draw this uh, vertical line that you can see on the screen and then all you need to do is grab your sharp blade and go in and score all those lines that we've uh, drawn onto the foam like so. But before you heat up or do anything extra just leave it as it is, we'll get to that eventually. What you're now going to do is the somewhat difficult part. You're going to cut the template exactly like I'm showing you on screen. Seeing how I cut on the right edge here where I'm pointing, make sure you cut that off. So you should have the uh, two like so, and then all you're going to do is slowly trace it on to the EVA foam uh, slab that we have, and then continue to break apart the template. As long as you kind of copy what's on screen, you should be able to get the template transferred easy enough without too much difficulty. What we can do then is once we've got all the uh, templates lined on, we have the design looking nice and free, go ahead with a ruler or a uh, straight edge and clean up those lines so that way they're all horizontal and, uh, well, clean, and then go in and score them all. Now, do be careful, you want to make sure you are scoring and following the guidelines themselves. If you overshoot and you cut through something you're not, you will unfortunately notice it when we uh, heat up the foam. As you've already experienced with scoring, it does uh, separate the foam quite a bit, so you do 100% want to make sure you take your time with this, because this is a key point and a piece of detail on the gun that you will always see when you're doing photo shoots. And there you go, once it's all heated it should look really pretty. And actually that does look quite nice. As you can see all the uh, segments have expanded and then all we need to do is wait for it to cool and then we can line it up onto the SMG itself. Now it should sit just behind the first two uh, segments that you can see there on the left. Pretty much exactly like that and part of it should sit maybe an inch onto the back butt section. And once you've glued it in it should hold pretty perfectly and give the overall gun a bit more stability. Now onto more interesting designs. We're of course going to tackle the top kind of sight thing. Not 100% sure of the actual technical term. But what we'll do is we'll carve out two slices or slabs of foam. We're using the template. Now of course you want to flip it so you can have a left and a right side. That way keeping the textured on the middle. And then what you're going to do is draw in this uh, horizontal line here straight across. So that way we can now start to uh, kind of thin out this template a bit. Now what you're going to do is draw a line in the top vertical section like you can see here and we're actually going to carve this part in half. Obviously we don't need it to be this thick to be a sight because actually you're supposed to see through this segment. So then of course you can go do that on the second piece. So you should have two nice slabs looking like that with a bit of a trimmed uh, top section. Now what you're going to do is cut the template where I've shown you here, and we're going to cut out a new segment from the foam, which is going to act as the uh, interior segment between these two pieces. If that doesn't make sense, just watch the next uh, 10 seconds and it will all start to kind of come together and you'll see what I mean. Pretty much as the two pieces that we cut initially, it's not thick enough to allow an actual uh, site or piece of uh, 
glass or whatever it is on the actual design to fit in. So what we do need to do is create an internal uh, barrier to thicken out the uh, overall site and make it a bit more not realistic I guess. But now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a new little segment and then cut that in half as well and this is going to attack uh, what am I word? going to uh, act as the uh, top to the arch or the top roof to this uh, site mechanism. So all you need to do is uh, make sure it fits in the middle and if it doesn't fit 100% with yours just uh, either cut a new one or trim it just to make it fit in the middle like so. Nothing too difficult. Now we can start putting some detail into the site just to make it look a bit more interesting rather than the bland slab of foam that it currently is. So what you can do is you can break apart the template so we have this uh, little horizontal line sorry right down the bottom of the prop. And then what you can do is you can actually give a depth line underneath and what we'll go and do is we'll actually uh, cut vertically down and then come back vertically in. So that way you're cutting out a uh, square shape, so to speak, into the foam. Just giving it this nice kind of 3D terraced effect. Just so it uh, will stick out a bit when we actually glue it on top of the SMG core. What we can then do is cut out this uh, square rectangle uh, long slab, I guess, I don't know what you call it. Long rectangle piece transfer that onto the foam where it should be and what we'll do is we'll just uh, score it. We don't need to cut it out, that might be a bit too difficult uh, for some, so all we need to do is score it, of course then heat it up and it should expand those lines and it looks relatively cool. If you want to add any more detail to that you can of course, but for the beginners and for the base of the design that is perfectly fine and all you need to do is glue it into position. Now the design does have these little semicircle uh, sections that act as the basic iron sights which go on top of the uh, gun itself. So all we need to do is uh, cut out that template, transfer onto the uh, foam two of them. Once you've cut that out carefully from the foam, you can then just slice this into uh, maybe a quarter. We don't need it to be that thick, we don't need it to be half even, we just need about a quarter of it. All we need to do is cut out two of those for the back and then what you can do is you can transfer this uh, horizontal line on, you can just free free draw it, nothing too crazy. And what you're going to do then is just score that line. This is just going to act as a simple piece of detail as it kind of resembles what the actual design does have. And of course take the heat gun to it, heat it up so that way it expands and then all you need to do is glue them into position carefully. Once they are glued on they should hold pretty well and of course um, they are little fragile pieces but once you seal this prop up in the end they should uh, be quite um, durable and they shouldn't break off unless you decided to like rip them off on purpose or bite them. But that's kind of where they sit and that's where you should have your gun at at the moment. So now the design is really starting to come together but we've still got a few more things to go to finish it off. So what you can do is grab the uh, template for the trigger guard and what we'll do is we'll transfer it onto the foam and then we'll actually uh, make two copies. Of course we want it to be as thick as the handle so we'll cut out two pretty much exactly the same and just simply glue them together. Nothing too crazy and nothing too difficult. But then of course just to make sure it fits in nicely what we'll do is we'll uh, trim the edges which of course will tr uh, connect to the uh, what do you call it, the handle because we of course beveled the handle if we were to leave it alone it would look rather well not fitting very well let's just put it at that. So adding this little beveled edge should make it uh, add seamlessly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the little uh, laser sight area. Now this is just a very basic uh, template uh, to substitute unless you actually wanted to put a light or some form of laser light that actually works and you can buy from uh, cheap stores or whatever you can get them from. So if you want to do that, I highly recommend attaching it rather than this, but if you don't and you want something just to sit there, then I recommend just quickly following what you've pretty much seen in the last uh, few scenes, just to make sure you do have something sitting on the suppressor. But pretty much all I did was transfer that onto the EVA foam, transfer those details onto it, score it, and then heat it up so that all the uh, these uh, rectangles separate and look rather nice. Now of course this little section is where the actual light um, would be, but of course rather than doing it with an actual light, we'll substitute it by just using a block of foam. <laughs> the most exciting thing possible, a block of foam. But we'll make it exciting by adding little notches and a few little levels. So if you do want to do this, just follow what's happening on uh, screen. All we're doing is uh, cutting the foam sections out and trimming them so they can uh, 
give it a bit of a difference. And then of course drawing in these vertical lines and scoring them. So when we run the heat gun over, it separates like we've been doing for all our scoring techniques, just to give it a bit more differentiation. And as you can see here, those three segments will add together and give us somewhat of a unique, yeah, somewhat of a unique design. I'm losing my words here. And all we're doing is gluing it onto a cardboard tube or whether you want to use a PVC pipe is up to you for cheap purposes and for beginners cardboard tubes will work perfectly fine. But to spice it up and give it a bit more detail of course what we'll do is we'll grab this little section of the template and we'll break it up because what we're going to do is we're going to carve some slabs out of uh, foam and make them nice and thin and we'll wrap it around the uh, cardboard tube. So all we're doing is grabbing the template and actually putting it back to back so making it twice as long and that should relatively fit most. If it doesn't stretch all the way around then you'll have to quickly uh, try it again and make sure you add a bit more to the length. Once we've got that we can just mark out a straight edge and make the uh, foam maybe a quarter thinner and then slice it and it should just wrap around the back section of the suppressor exactly where we've pretty much put the fill-in um, light attachment or scope or laser sight attachment. What you're going to do is you of course do two of those strips and just glue them into position like so. Of course it does look pretty bland right now but when it's painted up it should look somewhat more like the original design intended it to be. But as you can see we've got them both sitting there and they actually look like well ODST SMG uh, components. All that's left to do now is find a way to bridge these two together and have it quite sturdy. Now the way I'm simply doing it is I'm tracing the perimeter of what my suppressor size is and then taking it in a few millimeters that gives me the idea of that's how much foam I need to fill the gap between it. So once I've done that I can simply carve that circle out of the foam and this is going to allow me to have the barrel um, end. Of course we can't really have it open like that. I mean you could if you wanted to but it'd be more like a, a shotgun slug rather than an actual precise SMG bullet coming out. So what we're doing is we're just pretty much cutting out that circle, gluing it together and then gluing it into place. Just simply by putting some glue and pushing it into the barrel so it should sit there nicely and look a bit more like a suppressor rather than a cardboard tube, <laughs> if you get what I mean. And now we need to make the barrel that links the uh, core of the gun to the suppressor itself. So all I'm doing is measuring pretty much what we did before, the width of the uh, cardboard tube or the pipe that you're using so that way you can cut out a slab of foam that should fit in like that. Of course we can't have it sitting like that so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use that as a template and make two additional so that we should have three. If you want it to be a bit more thicker you can use four but three should be fine just for this. Then all you need to do is glue all those three slabs together so that way you have a thick foam core I guess. Once you've done that of course then you can uh, measure some horizontal lines into the positions like I've done on screen. You want to add some depth ones as well because what we're going to do is bevel it. It's not going to be 100% a circle. If you do want to make it 100% a circle using a Dremel go for it. If not this will do just fine. We just need to bevel those edges just to allow this slab to fit into the barrel itself. Of course once we glue it into position it's not going to move. But before we do that, we need to make sure it actually connects to the SMG rather well. So all I'm doing is using the actual slant of the SMG as a guide, transferring that onto the slab of this three layered uh, core of foam and then cutting it out vertically down so that way it shouldn't have any issue sticking together. Then of course heat it up with the whole uh, heat gun so that way all the fibers uh, definitely uh, mesh together and you should be able to glue it into position perfectly filling in all the gaps to give it the extra strength needed because you don't ever want this breaking off but for the most part foam and foam sticks together pretty well but do make sure that it is secured tightly. And finally to finish it all off go ahead and design yourself a small little trigger nothing that needs to be crazy something just like that and just put it into place where the uh, trigger should go under the uh, under the handle and between the trigger guard and that's pretty much it. Now remember this is just a very basic magnum constructed for you guys to uh, replicate for mostly designed and aimed at beginners so if you want to go ahead and add a whole bunch more detail I implore you to go and do that make it your own. Now of course there are all those little circles that are on the individual 
sorry, the original design. Now that is very hard to replicate out of EVA foam unless you have a Dremel where you can actually put them into place. But a lot of the time, unless you actually rule them out to be perfect, you will have a very uh, unusual looking design because not everything is lined up correctly. So unless you're good at doing that and you're comfortable with it, then go for it. But if not, I would recommend leaving it as it is, unless you wanna go find something to add onto it to bring those circles together. So that's it. Hopefully it came out how you wanted it. Please don't judge yours based on how mine has turned out. Remember, I've built about 300 plus styrofoam props, all being hand carved in the six years, seven years that I've been doing this. So if this is your very first attempt using EVA foam, there will be some differences. So I can put that out now, but with some skill and some more training, and hell, it might even look fantastic. Almost 100 times better than what my first initial attempts did. So please don't uh, doubt yourself too much on that. And if you do enjoy it, well, you'll continue to do it and your skill will get better over time. I 100% can confirm that. Unless you somehow chop off your arm and then you only have the ability to carve with one hand, then uh, I can't 100% <laughs> confirm that. So, yeah, don't do that. Now, of course, you're probably wondering, well, what can I do? Well, how can I take it further? Well, you can go now and seal it, then paint it. Now, if you're wondering what a basic sealing and painting could do, there's tutorials on my channel as well as the wider web out there for more advanced techniques. But if you want, you can click on the link here, which takes you to my painting and sealing video, which gives you a basic tutorial on how to do that. And of course, this process was replicated to produce this one. Ah, magic. Now, of course, this has just had a very basic paint job. Um, something very simple just to give you the idea that you can actually paint this up to look at least somewhat decent to uh, add into a film or just to hang on your wall like mine. It's up to you, but nonetheless, it does do the rounds quite well. But otherwise, myself and my tight full friend here will, of course, bid you adieu and enjoy all the other coming tutorials on your way. Of course, we've got the Halo Magnum, which is going to follow the exact same uh, tutorial style as this one, where we'll go through the EVA steps and get you one of those as well. Thank you very much for watching, drop a like, and I'll catch you guys later.